Uh, we have time to take um, in a few questions from the audience. If you'd like to ask, please uh, identify yourself and state um, that uh, you know to who, which speaker is the question addressed to. If anybody would like to ask questions, please uh, feel free to ask. There, Professor Sydney Ribeiro. Thank you, Sanjay. Sydney Ribeiro, Delhi University in Cambridge. Uh, Sanjay, we'll leave it to you as chair. You've done a brilliant job thus far to identify the panelists you want to, dis to respond to this question. If convergence has caused a great deal of cross-fertilization of technologies and techniques and attitudes and interests and thereby content making, and if the market, Mr. Chairman, is monarch, and since we are out to colonize eyeballs and all other such sphericals of the human body, is there scope at this point of analysis and Congress to ensure that techno-triumphalism is tempered with sensitivity and with the aesthetics? Because sensitivity and aesthetics are the essence of what Jay called the human experience. So over to you, Sanjay, and you decide which of the panelists will respond. Thank I you. I think uh, Dr. Menon and Mr. Balakrishnan must respond to this. Brilliant uh, question. I'll be happy to start off by saying I completely agree. At the end of the day, it is about the experience. Uh, the technology is subservient to that. So the entire focus in terms of the experience and value that convergence can bring to the customer or the consumer, if you will, is really what all the industries behind the scenes needs to have. It has got to be an outside-in view, not an inside-out view. It's not the pipe provider saying, what can I do better, or the content provider saying, what can I do better. It's got to be the other way around and say, what are the needs of the customer and the consumer. How do you define what could be a possible Maslow's need hierarchy for the customer? Because what is today uh, self-actualization will tomorrow become a basic need, that's for sure. And from that point of view, then work the equation backwards and you say, if that's really how we see it's playing out, how can we leverage the evolutions and the conveniences that technology, elegance and sophistication is bringing to the table? At the end of the day, I think there's a huge responsibility for providing the basic needs for all the consumers. And let's not forget, we've got about a billion plus people in this, in this country alone who do not have the means of just communicating with each other. There's still about 260, 270 million. And I think there are some basic needs that can be serviced simultaneously. And it's a simultaneous equation, and that's the beauty of this whole paradigm. It's not distinct. It is not separate. Simultaneously, how do we then service and provide the entertainment and or the other needs that might arise for the human being. So clearly it has to be human and experience driven. It cannot be just technology and elegance driven. Absolutely not. As a consequence, there will be industry evolution. There will be shifts and that's bound to happen. It's bound to happen that so-called pipe providers do not look at themselves as pipe providers. So-called content providers do not look at themselves as only content providers. Communication providers do not just look at themselves as communication providers. It really is going to be a confluence of computing, communication and entertainment. But I think at the end of the day, it is all subservient to the human evolution and the human needs. Now, how we then evolve the business models, how do we handle the neighborhood seep phenomenon, as I call it, which is neighboring industries, seeping into each other's spaces as it might seem at this point in time is something that industry will have to resolve. I think there will have to be means by which cooperation will happen. A good example was Microsoft sharing. It's not just about Microsoft, it's about their hundreds of partners or thousands of partners that are out there. It is going to be about an ecosystem evolution from the industry point of view. But at the end of the day, it's really as simple. It is about the human, human needs, the human experience and how those very, very uh, Self-actualization oriented features tomorrow really do become basic features. And that's really what, it, what the game is all about. You, pass it back to you. you know, uh, if I were you, I wouldn't worry too much about 
technological triumphalism, it, it may sound in audiences like this, that with a panel like us, may think that everything is inevitable and the march of technology is you know, unstoppable. Far from it. Uh, society has its own control systems around it. I, my favorite story on that is in India today, India is today perceived to be a software power, you know, one of the top three in the world. Uh, I used to run, among other things, a computer company in Bangalore in the mid 80s. And at that time, it was so difficult to get any <coughs> Indian middle class person to accept the notion of computers. They shut it out from every bank, from every office, till around 87, 88. It became a clarion call when it was seen that technology and computer science students would get jobs out of this whole deal. And when society perceived that IT people can, IT companies provide jobs as opposed to take away jobs, they accepted it. So, if anything, my fear is in India there are too many drags on technology adoption. So, I would dress completely, I would not worry at all. We, we don't have the problem in this country at least. Hmm?